Hi students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. I am Darshana, or all of you are fine. Let us continue the topic. We are, we already studied two poems: Beat Beat Drums by Walt Whitman and Hop by Emily Dickinson. Today we are going to discuss our third poem, A Prayer in Spring by Robert Frost. I think all of you are very familiar with this poet, Robert Frost. Am I right? Yes. This very famous poem that is the rod not taken. I think this particular poem, uh, uh, you have studied this poem in your school classes. Am I right? Yes. What is this poem about? The rod not taken. Yes. We, we readers get a definite message from that particular poem. It allows the readers to think about choices in life. Choices in the life sense means whether to go with the mainstream or go it alone. That is in front of the pot, there are two roads and the pot took the road less traveled by. That means in sometimes in our life, that is this particular poem, that is the road not taken, it highlights those times, that difficult times or uh, uh, particular times in life when a decision has to be made. So it highlights choices in life. That means we readers get a definite message from that particular poem. So here we are going to study another poem by Robert Frost that is A Prayer in Spring by Robert Frost. A Prayer in Spring. So before entering into the poem, let us discuss some details about Robert Frost. Robert Frost his life period was from 1874 to 1963. And he was born in San Francisco, California. That means he was an American poet. But his ancestry was of New England to which his name is most firmly associated with. That means his ancestors are from New England. It's a particular region. New England means an area which comprises six states of the northern United States. And the six states are Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island and Vermont. These six states together constitute that particular region that is New England. And his ancestors were from this particular region, that is New England. So his name, that is Robert Frost, his name was most associated with, that is his name is most firmly associated with that particular region, that is New England. Then after attending Dartmouth College for some time, he worked as a bobbin boy, boy in a mill. Bobbin boy in a mill means uh, bo uh, the person who worked in a textile mill during 18th and the early 19th centuries. And bobbin means is we can see that particular instrument, particular uh, machine, uh, uh, particular that bobbin, that thing in sewing, sewing machines. It is cylindrical in form in which the threads are waving. That is called a bobbin. So, after attending Dartmouth College for some time, he worked as a bobbin boy in a mill, then worker in a shoe factory, a reporter in a newspaper, and at last, farmer and as a school teacher. Yes, that means he worked in uh, different areas. That is, as a bobbin boy in a mill, worker in a shoe factory, reporter in a newspaper, then farmer and at last as a school teacher. Finally, he settled to farming with his family. Yes, at last he settled in farming with his family. But then at that time also he wrote so many poems, writing poems. Along with his more demanding response to the family necessities. Yes, he was from a poor family. That's why he settled to farming with his family to meet his family needs. 
and also he wrote so many poems during that particular time and prost remains highly remains highly honored among american poets receiving the pulitzer prize four times yes he he remains highly honored among american poets and he received pulitzer prize four times in his lifetime and the years are 1924 1931 1937 and 1943 that means he got pulitzer prize four times in his lifetime which shows his versatility or his contributions to literary american literature or uh, it shows his genius his genius as a poet that means he got pulitzer prize four times in his lifetime that was a great achievement he uh, got in his lifetime that means uh, got pulitzer prize four times then the flavor of new england life an insight into new england character and a surprising penetration into life's complexities are the trademarks of prose poems the flavor of new england life i already told you his ancestry was of new england that means his ancestors were from new england that particular region and his name is most firmly associated with that particular region that is new england so we can trace the uh, rustic life or the characteristic uh, uh, features of particular life style of new england in the poems that is the flavor of new england life that rustic life or that local or their way of life or their experiences so that flavor the flavor of new england life we can trace in this poems then an insight into new england character i already told you his name is most firmly associated with new england that means he was highly attached to that particular region new england so he has a definite idea or definite uh, uh, knowledge regarding the lifestyle uh, experiences or uh, regarding that particular region etc so we can trace that insight from his poems and insight into new england character their way of life their culture their traditions this new england people so he has a definite insight into new england life and we can trace those characteristics in his poems and a surprising penetration into life's complexities are the trademarks of prose poems and a surprising penetration into life's complexities that means he has a definite uh, knowledge or idea regarding um, uh, the regarding the meaning of life best example is his fa very famous poem the rot not chicken that particular poem highlights the uh, choices in life that means we all have such a uh, times in our life to take better decisions in our life in front of us we have so many choices and we should choose the better one in our life so a surprising penetration into life's complexities all these are the trademarks of prose then most of his poems deal with a lot of fundamental questions yes that is the rodna taken is also an example for this fact because that particular poem deals with a definite idea it is yes it is something closely related with our life so most of his poems deal with a lot of fundamental philosophical questions it is another characteristic feature of his poems at the same time there are certain elements of bleakness and loneliness that lurk within the poems of prose that means yes we already Uh, uh, I all uh, we already discussed that. Yes, his poems 
deal with a lot of philosophical questions. At the same time, that is on the one hand, there are certain elements of bleakness. Bleakness means something related with the hopelessness or a discouraging etc. That means certain elements of bleakness, it is uh, uh, at, uh, something related to cold realities or uh, uh, actually the basic meaning is cold weather or something like that. Here the meaning is something related with the hopelessness or discouraging or something like that. So there are certain elements of bleakness and loneliness that lurk within the poems of prose. We can trace such characteristic features in his poems along with the, that energetic, philosophical, fundamental questions. Some negative elements we can trace in his poems. But his use of rural settings and farm life and his focus on man's reaction to the natural processes taking place around him also points towards a reflective and even cheerful outlook on life. Yes, I already told you he was highly attached with the, that particular region that is New England. That means he deeply observed the lifestyle, culture, their way of life, uh, their experiences, etc. He deeply observed the life of or the rural setting of uh, New England. So his use of rural settings and I already told you, yes, in the early period of his lifetime, he settled to farming uh, along with his family to meet his uh, family needs. So uh, the portrayal of family, uh, farm life in his poems. So his use of rural settings and farm life and his focus on man's reaction to the natural processes. That means he closely uh, uh, observed people's re, uh, reaction to the nature that taking place around him also points towards all these things points towards a reflective and even cheerful outlook on life. And moreover, he wrote about time and about the inevitable changes that it brought throughout one's lifetime. So we can trace all these characteristics from his poems, from his different poems. I think all of you clear about Robert Frost. Then regarding the poem, A Prayer in Spring. What is this poem about? Yes. Yes. This particular poem, that is the poem, A Prayer in Spring begins with an earnest plea. Look at the title of the poem, A Prayer in Spring. So this particular poem begins with an earnest plea. Earnest plea means plea. What is the meaning of the word plea? Plea means it is a, a request, that is a request in an emotional manner or something like that. So this particular poem is in the form of a prayer and it, uh, begins with an earnest plea. That is this a prayer in spring, look at the title, a prayer in spring begins with an earnest plea. Here it is in the form of a prayer to God. Here the poet celebrates the glorious beauty of spring. That he sees all around him. Yes, here in this particular poem, that is a prayer in spring, he celebrates the glorious beauty of spring season. He expresses the beauty of that particular season, that is spring season, that he sees all around him. And what is the peculiarity of this particular uh, season, that is spring? Spring contains the bounty of wonderful gifts regardless of what may come from the harvest. Yes, that means the trees begin to grow their leaves. That means trees are full of green leaves. Plants start to flower. Yes, all plants that start to flower. That is flowers, fruits, then young, uh, tiny creatures like uh, birds, bees, all were enjoying during this particular 
season that is spring season that means we get a bounty of wonderful gifts wonderful gifts in the form of this beauty of nature that is the flowering of plants trees fruits flowers and the happiness of these tiny creatures in the nature so spring contains the bounty of wonderful gifts regardless of what may come from the harvest and it is also a season of harvesting so that doesn't a matter what we get from the harvest but it contains the bounty of wonderful gifts wonderful gifts in the sense means we get fruits flowers etc so here in this particular poem poet celebrates the glorious beauty of spring season that he sees all around him and he asks the reader to enjoy the beauty of the moment since it is a time of rebirth of fertility yes he asks the readers he asks the reader to enjoy the beauty of the moment yes he asks uh, as to enjoy the present moment don't think about the future or don't think about the yes past because this future is uncertain to us that means we don't uh, consider the harvest what what we get from the harvest that doesn't even matter enjoy the present moment he asks the reader to enjoy the beauty of the moment that present moment means enjoy this particular season that is spring season this present moment because it is a time of rebirth the yes, spring season is considered as a time of rebirth or fertility in the sense means all trees are growing or uh, yes with the full of green leaves then flowers start to flower so it is a period of it is a time of rebirth or fertility so poet tells the reader to enjoy that particular moment at present time don't think about the uncertain harvest don't think about the future what we get from the harvest or what will be the future that future that doesn't even matter enjoy the present moment the poem asks us to hold on it as long as we can because it is a time of rebirth and happiness so the poem asks us to hold on it as long as we can and the title of the poem itself shows the expression of gratitude to god's blessing that relates to the whole content of the poem is yes. look at the title a prayer in spring so the title itself shows the yes shows us that it is a form of prayer so it is shows the expression of gratitude it is shows the expression of poet's gratitude of poet's thankfulness to god's blessing he considers this particular season is god's blessing to us it is a gift of god this bounty of wonderful gifts the spring season itself is a gift of god he considers that is our poet considers yes it is a gift of god to humanity this particular season so he asks us to that's why in the beginning part i told you that it is a, it is in a form of prayer it is an earnest plea in the form of an earnest plea that means it is the title of the poem itself shows the expression of gratitude that means poet's thankfulness to god's blessings for giving such a wonderful season to us and that relates that expression that expression of gratitude or thankfulness to god's blessings that relates to the whole content of the poem this is this is the meaning or the gist of this particular poem that is a prayer in spring i think all of you understand this session that is regarding our poet robert frost and uh, what is this poem about a prayer in spring so there is a homework for you write a note on robert frost write the homework and send back to me and uh, uh, we will discuss the poem in detail in the next class thank you have a nice day see you again